I'm Dr. Redmond, and I'm going to be reviewing the Organic Metabolomics, or OMX, profile from Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory. The test is 14 pages. The markers are divided into six categories, with several subcategories within each section. The first page is a summary of findings. The top half is a broad overview. It lists the percent of markers that were out of range in each category and lists them as minimal, moderate, or high. This is a closer look at the bottom half, which lists the subcategories and the percentage of markers that are out of range. The categories are metabolic processing, amino acid and protein metabolism, nutrition, stress and mood, toxic impacts, and microbial metabolites. As you can see here in example, metabolic processing has 23% of all the markers within the category out of range. But when you look at the individual subcategories, you can see that that primarily comes from the glycolysis category. Beyond the summary of findings, there are 12 pages of results and a final recommendation page. I'm going to go over each of these pages, but I'm going to start with a few details. Each of the analytes are listed in bold, and below them is their primary enzyme that they utilize next. So here we see pyruvic acid and its primary enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Additionally, any cofactors, nutrient cofactors, are listed. So pyruvate dehydrogenase function is dependent on having adequate supplies of vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, and lipoic acid, which is listed as LA. Additionally, the amino acids can be done in plasma or urine. If they're done in plasma, they'll have a small P beside them. So we can go through the test. Metabolic processing includes markers of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, fatty acid oxidation, and ketone markers, and then we move to amino acids and protein metabolites. And here we see the essential amino acid and its breakdown products. We start with phenylalanine and the branch chain amino acid, tryptophan, methionine and histidine, threonine and lysine, glutamate and aspartate, and collagen catabolism. The next section we go into is nutrition. And in nutrition, we look at individual B vitamins. We look at diet assessment. We move into section four, which is stress and mood, and looks at markers associated with stress and mood. We have toxic impacts, so looks at toxins and the impacts of those toxins. And then the last category we look at is microbial metabolites. And then the last page lists recommendations. Section one looks at metabolic processing. It looks at markers associated with glycolysis and fatty acid oxidation, both of which flow into the Krebs cycle. Here we have glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Fatty acid oxidation markers look at several groupings of markers that are associated with impairments to beta oxidation, including impairments to short and medium chain acyl dehydrogenase enzymes. Section two, amino acid and protein metabolism. It looks at the metabolism of essential amino acids their catabolic products, as well as collagen catabolism, meat intake, GABA, and the urea cycle. Here is an example of how the amino acids are presented in the OMX report. They follow the pathway diagrams. Here tryptophan can go to make serotonin, and its breakdown product is 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid. Though its main route is down the kinurinin pathway to make niacin, increased inflammation 
can increase the IDO enzyme, which pulls tryptophan further down the kinurinin pathway. The kinurinin to tryptophan ratio, or KT ratio, has been called the gold standard for determining IDO activity. A higher KT ratio has been associated with higher BMI, diabetes, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, reduced cognition, and other age-related inflammation conditions. Section 3, Nutrition. Here we look at micronutrients, B vitamins. The first section are B-complex markers. These are the 3-dehydrogenase enzymes that require B-complex markers. We look at B12, folate. For B6, we look at actual B6 levels with pyridoxic acid and xanthuric acid, which becomes elevated when B6 need arises. We also look at biotin, need for biotin. The second half of the nutrition section looks at markers of intake. It looks at components of plant intakes. It looks at markers of meat intake and fructose intake. Section four, stress and mood, looks at GABA. It looks at catecholamine and serotonin turnover again, so you can see them with the other stress and mood markers. It also looks at cortisol, cortisone, and aldosterone. Toxic impacts. Looks at levels of toxins and associated reactions. We look at 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine, which is a well-known marker of oxidative damage to DNA. We look at markers that identify xylene and styrene exposure. And we look at glucaric acid, which identifies P450 activity or phase one detoxification. Section five also looks at several markers within the urea cycle. Lastly, toxic impact looks at markers related to kidneys. The orotic acid excretion has been used as an indicator of ornithine or arginine insufficiency. Elevated microalbumin or albumin is associated with diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease. Phosphate is considered an indicator of intestinal phosphorus absorption. Phosphate toxicity has been associated with the disease of aging. Oxidative stress and metabolic syndrome can drive oxalic acid formation pathways. The last section is microbial metabolites. In this section, we're looking at metabolites made by the gut microbiota. The top two markers identify microbial action on intestinal amino acids, tyrosine and tryptophan. Indolacetic acid is one of the predominant tryptophan microbial metabolites. The next section looks at microbial action on polyphenols. And generally speaking, 3,4-dihydroxycinnamic acid is correlated with flavonoids. 3,5-dihydroxybenzoic acid has been correlated with intake of whole grain or breakfast cereals. 4-hydroxybenzoic acid correlates with anthocyanides. Benzoic acid is primarily made endogenously by gut bacteria acting upon polyphenols from foods such as berries, though we can also come from processed foods. Hippuric acid has been positively associated with gut diversity, intake of polyphenols, and in, been inversely associated with metabolic syndrome. Benzoic acid conjugates with glycine to make hippuric acid. The last part of the microbial section includes equal, which is made by bacterial action on isoflavones, and arabinitol, which can be produced from candida. And the last page looks at personalized metabolic recommendation. We look at micronutrient needs. We list the micronutrients and if additional uh, needs are required. If they are, they're moderate or high, and we add to the recommendation. If no, no additional needs are noted, we simply list the daily value of that nutrient, and clinicians can work up from there. We list each of the amino acids, and if they're high or low, and this is a nice place to look at all the amino acids together.
And then lastly, we have additional support. We look at need for glutathione, level of inflammation, and parameters related to liver function and kidney function. Beyond using organic acids and amino acids to simply identify nutrient needs, metabolomics research utilizes metabolic patterns, metabolomic patterns to identify disease or associated with disease. There's been considerable research on metabolic disorders, including diabetes, insulin resistance, prediabetes, and there's also been a lot of research on a range of mood disorder, gut issues, cardiovascular disease, COPD, cancer, and others. Here I'm going to review some of the markers identified as associated with metabolic conditions. These are two large meta-analysis studies that both identified that increased plasma levels of branched-chain amino acids, aromatic amino acids, and alanine were associated with higher risk of prediabetes and diabetes. Glycine and glutamine levels were found to be protective. This 2021 article from Biomolecules is a nice review if you're looking for further information. Here is a case example of a 58-year-old woman who's having a yearly physical and wants to check her metabolomic status. Metabolomics can be used to identify concerns in several health conditions, but there are also researchers recommending checking metabolomic status when you're healthy so you can compare against them as you age. So in this patient who wants to do a metabolomics assessment, given her family history, I would start by looking at those markers associated with metabolic impairments lactic acid and alanine, phenylalanine and tyrosine, individual and total branch chain amino acids, glycine, and the glutamine to glutamate ratio. Here you can see everything is in the wrong direction, and I would consider this high risk. Additional markers that I'm also going to review are D-lactic acid, the KTR ratio, markers of glutathione, and alpha-aminoadipic acid. Thanks for reviewing the OMX profile with me. Please contact us if you want any further information.